Hey, everybody. Hey. I'm so sorry for the late start, but hopefully everybody can join us this evening. Welcome. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. It is a Sunday night, Father's Day, and whew, it is just one of those days where um, I'm just thankful to be here. <laughs> Um, I'm so super excited, y'all. I have a wonderful guest with me this evening. But before I let her introduce herself and her channel, I want to first remind everybody, make sure you hit the subscribe button and select all on notifications, the bell right next to it so that you can catch all of these blind community chats in the future. Sometimes I can keep a schedule and sometimes I can't, which is why those notifications are really handy. Um, make sure you also check out the description box for my guest channel as well. Make sure you subscribe to her as well and show her some love. She is also a fellow blind mom like myself. However, the difference is she likes to cook and I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to um, definitely let her introduce herself in just a minute. I want to give everyone who are my current subs a chance to get those notifications right now and join us in the live stream. So if anyone is just now entering, make sure you say hello, pop into the live chat and tell us what you're doing tonight what you're up to if you have any questions make sure you put a cue in front of that so that i can identify you're asking us a question and if you're watching this on the replay thank you so much i'm going to try to add some chapters for you guys in the description box as well so that you can skip through and get directly to the content you're interested in but comment what you, any questions you have, any comments that you have, and we will also be responding to those comments as well. Uh, all right. So, Jerry, you go, girl. It is your turn. Tell us about yourself and your channel and how it all got started. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Jerry. And those of you who don't know me, my channel is My Blind Mama's Messy Kitchen. And uh, I am totally blind. I went blind in 1985. So I'm aging, my, yeah, I'm aging myself a little bit. Oh, I'm no, girl, you're fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was 13 years old when I went totally blind, like totally can't see anything. Both of my eyes are prosthetics. Um, oh, I did not know that. Yeah, okay. I, well, we'll get back to that, but it's a long story. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> a very yes. long story. But um. So I started cooking a long time ago. My mom worked at a grocery store, so she had crazy hours. And mm -hmm. my dad was retired, and he was not a cook. So my mom would leave, you know, like simple crock pot instructions for me to do. Um, oh, yeah. So I started that, and I was, like, fascinated that I could make a meal because I was young and really didn't have any interest before that. And so just kind of from there, I just decided I liked cooking a lot. So she... My mom taught me a lot about the kitchen and um, I had a little bit of independent living uh, training. The lady would come out to my house and, but you know, it was so long ago. I don't even remember how many sessions we had, but it wasn't that many. Um, mm -hmm. so I learned, I always was, I'm one to do it my way. You, They can show me this is how you should do it or we recommend you do it. But as soon as they were gone, I'm like, I'm doing it my way. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. That's and that's how many of us function. You know, sometimes it's like we can listen to tips, tricks, how everybody else does it. But sometimes at the end of the day, we just got to find what works yep. for our unique household and situation. Yep. So um, YouTube began th three years ago or four? Uh, three or four years ago. Now. Uh, I have my daughter here with me, Kate. You, A lot of you know her from um, she does my camera work for me and she She's used the to behind be, the scene. Yeah. yeah. She used to be in the videos a lot. And then we backed off from that. But, um, anyway, I was doing a search on YouTube. I was new to the whole YouTube scene. So mm -hmm. I started doing a search for, um, jobs for the blind, you know, um, yeah. just work from home type things. And I came across a channel. Um, his name was, Johnny, what was his channel? Um, Blind Nation was yeah. his old channel name. And mm -hmm. I started listening to him and I was like, he was really new at it. Mm -hmm. And he was just 
just doing it, just making videos and putting them up there. He uh, wasn't totally blind, but he I thought, can't remember if he was slowly losing his vision, but I reached out to him mm -hmm. and we started chatting and he was like, just, just do it, girl. If you like to cook, just, just do it. Cause I was, yeah. that's told. how you, that's, that's how yeah, you started. started. That's the best way. So that's a long, you know, the short of the long end of it, but yeah, uh, yeah I took his advice and I started doing videos. Awesome. awesome. Great. So you now, so you said you, um, complete blindness. So not even LP and I did not know you had prosthetics. That is just mm -hmm. mind blowing to me. Okay. <laughs> how did I, how did I, I, I don't, have you ever talked about that in your videos? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. I that's, I that's I okay. Okay. I I and I'm so glad. I'm um, so Jerry, you're the first one to have your daughter who is sighted, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're okay. So this is awesome because this is a new opportunity for any blind parents out there to ask you guys as a question from both sides of the fence, from both perspectives. I think a lot of parents really like to hear from, you know, other, you know, kids of, of, you know, who are raised by a blind, a visually impaired parent, just to kind of get their actual first-hand account and uh, so you know hey maybe we'll have some questions for you tonight as well Kate um I'm glad you guys are kind of like west coasters because it's late for me so yeah <laughs> so Kate I'm glad I'm glad we're not keeping you up too late <laughs> oh no it's summer break it's it's whatever I see it, I see it, yeah anything goes huh I'm All in right. uh, Arizona where today I think it reached 116 degrees so oh my god we you know, we almost moved to we yeah. almost moved to Arizona. My husband actually, I think he interviewed for a job there, and we were like, "I like the heat and I like the humidity, but that's a little too hot." That's like you go outside and like you could your eyeballs burn. It's <laughs> terrible. It was 118 yesterday. Oh my goodness! How do y'all stand it? I guess it's, you all have a pool. You probably swim a lot. We do, but right now it's too hot to swim during the day. Wow. And the, the water is like in a warm bath. <laughs> yeah. So we go in the evening uh, as soon as the sun moves or we go in early morning. Other than that, it's just, you know, it's, we just suffer through. The rest of the year is beautiful here. So just got to. I want to welcome uh, Dukes of Hazard. Hey, what's up? <laughs> he, this is, this isn't. A very awesome sub he's he i love i love the, the comments but anyway uh What's he lives in texas man? so okay we're like and i'm in tennessee so i feel like y'all we're like covering the whole bottom edge there um let's see anyone else in the chat say hello and We'll see if anyone's got any questions tonight. So let's go ahead and I want to dive in first, Jerry, with the parenting piece. I feel like a lot of us are really um, kind of like just looking for validation and we're also looking to see, you know, how, you know, get the pulse on, on other moms' experiences, their fears, and how they got through some of the, you know, the, the difficult times, their mm -hmm. biggest tips, tricks, and all that kind of stuff. So did you, like, first starting out, did you have any major big fears as a blind mom, and, and what were they? Oh, yes. Uh, my son is 15, so he was first. Um mm -hmm. Well, I have a stepson as well, but he was seven years old before I met him. Um, okay. So he was already through the whole toddler newborn stage. Um, right. So Dylan is my son and he, I was terrified because I, I didn't know anything about being a parent, which a lot of, you know, cited or not, you're terrified. Um, yes, yes. I did a lot of research. Uh, I joined a parent, um, no, not a bulletin board, but like a list through, uh, I think it was through NFB. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a blind, I think it was called blind parents or blind parenting. So mm -hmm. I jumped on there and started asking for tips and advice from other blind parents mm -hmm. and got a lot of advice. Um, 
mostly for when they're older, toddlers, eating, crawling, all of that. The newborn thing, whew, <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> um, for the first yeah. month or so, my husband worked uh, construction at the time, and he would uh, take me and Dylan to my mom's house early in the morning for at least the first month because I was too afraid to be alone with him. Oh. And yeah, finally one day my mom said, you know, kid, it's time. You've just got to do this yourself. And they only, my parents only lived like half a mile away from me. So if I needed anything, you know, they mm -hmm. were around. Um, and you know, yeah. as soon as I did that, it just became just nature. It was just, right. I, knew, I just knew what to do immediately. Uh, yeah, that innate kind of instinct really kicks in. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Very strong. Um, you just get to know your baby. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever I would be around babies before, I was always, you know, kind of shy about um, touching the baby or holding the baby. But this was my baby. So I could right. touch his hair and touch his hands and touch his feet and, you know, his yeah. nose if I wanted to. And right. just became the mom, you know, just took yeah. over the mom role. And um, yeah, I think it's really difficult to anticipate the power of that mother baby bonding period. And, oh. and because you're right, when you are around as a blind person, other babies, you're mm -hmm. very hesitant. You're very cautious. You, you it's, it's almost like I. I don't know what the etiquette, you know, kind of yeah. is. And, yeah. and, but, and so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like we, we, all of a sudden, because of this, we don't have a whole lot of like touch experience mm -hmm. with babies on a level that really gives us a lot of insights as far as what to expect when we have our own. But when you have your own, it's, so completely different. You're yeah. right. They're all of yeah. that. I mean, it's your baby and you know, that yeah. baby inside and out yep. gross stuff, the cute stuff, oh, the everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't know I could change diapers so well. <laughs> yes. Yes. I never realized I'd become such a pro at like even changing a diaper while they're standing up. I mean, yes. got it down. Um, and so I think that that is, you know, I remember, you know, being fearful of like, well, how will I know when they're choking or how will I know when they have diaper rash? Yeah. How will I know when they have, you know, the, the, uh, the, all the visual stuff, you know, the stuff yeah. that everyone easily sees across the ring, but I can't. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how much you do know that stuff, whether you, you can see know. or not, you know, as the mom, as the parent, you mm -hmm. get it. Yeah. And guys, I don't want to just, I don't want to exclude fathers in this. It is Father's Day after all. So dads, it's the exact same situation. Your instincts yep. will kick in as well. You, it is your baby as well. All of this goes for dads as well. Now I know, for example, my, my husband who is cited the first year or two, he even acknowledged that he did not have the bond that I did as the nursing mother. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, there were times when he's like, hey, this is not, you know, <laughs> I am not the parent that needs to be taking care of this moment right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so he gracefully bowed out. But, you know, I think every parent uh, situation plays to their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. And, you know, everyone figures it out, whether it's the mom or the dad or both, what have you. And, um, yeah. I think, too, a lot of medical staff and people in the medical field and uh, social work, I think the, the, the culture is starting to really understand that about our community as well. I know in the 80s and 90s, there were a lot of concerns of, you know, CPS uh, oh, getting yeah. involved, all kinds of those horror stories. But I want to just really kind of reassure anyone out there who's expecting now. I was just speaking with a mother who is 10 weeks along currently right now. And oh. she actually asked me um, some bathing, her <laughs> her newborn questions. She, she had oh, some yeah. questions about bathing. So we're, I'm going to talk about that for heart this evening. We'll go there next. But I want to reassure all those new moms that the culture 
culture and in our society has gained a lot more sensitivity, compassion, and awareness that when we are in our own homes, when we have that, that bonding time with our babies, we are ever bit, if not better, <laughs> parents as far as taking care and knowing our children inside and out. And so um, I want to just reassure anyone who has any concerns about that to, to not uh, be too concerned because you don't see that kind of stuff happen nearly as much as it used to. Does it still? I don't want to say that. I'm sure there are situations out there where unfortunately there's still education that needs to take place. But is it the common thing that you see that you, you saw decades ago? No, I don't think so. Thank so, you. uh, yeah, right. I think mm -hmm. we have, we've got a long way to go, but, but when yeah. you really look back at some of the testimonies from years ago, especially before ADA, we really have actually made progress. So <laughs> you kind of have to keep perspective there. So Jerry, uh, what are some tips for bathing a, a newborn and, and a wiggling, jiggling, I don't want to do this kind of baby as well? What, what are some Whoa. of your tips and tricks? I have to think way back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kate is 12 now. She's my baby. Um, yeah. So it has been. So did you do bathing in a sink or in like a bath with like a, like a I had, baby bath? Um, well, the first bath that my son had, uh, my husband gave to him and he, my husband kind of showed me uh, what to do, how to hold him, um, right. not to be afraid, you know? Um, yes. Uh, he screamed the whole time and I cried because I was close to him. So I'm like, Aww, okay, why yeah. is he crying? And, um, <laughs> yeah. So but then what we did is we had one of those little plastic baby bathtubs. Yep. And I would stick that in the big bathtub mm -hmm. and I would just, um, hold, yep. you know, hold him with one hand and use the sponge with the other. Yep. Super, you know, lukewarm water. And, uh, yep. He got to where it, and yes, yes. When he was old enough to sit up, we got it was a different kind of bathtub that had like a oh gosh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was a plastic bathtub, but it had a seat that had a um, yeah, like a plastic bar in front of them, so they uh -huh. couldn't bend in half forward or they couldn't slide down. You know, I see. Yes. And so then um, they kind of hold them in place a little bit more, give them some support. Yeah. And they yeah. can reach over the, the bar and play with toys and things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a, oh, go ahead. I was about to say, there's so many different baby baths on the market right now. And I think baby products in general, it's like the market is just overwhelmed with so many gadgets and gizmos and i see almost on a daily basis questions in blind parenting forums or just blind support groups it seems like if if not every day every week someone asking questions about baby products suggestions for this type of products and recommendations for this you know baby thing and i i think that there are definitely more accessible options than others but when it comes to bathing, I feel like there's so many bells and whistles on some of them that I'm like, you know, you don't need all the bells and whistles to, really to make don't. it easier. And, and in really fact, don't. sometimes that can even be more of a distraction, a hindrance. Yeah. It's like there's too much going on. Yeah. And then that's just taking away from your strengths, which is listening and feeling right. and really being present with your baby. So yeah. I usually try not to, for a lot of, in a lot of the products and things in the baby realm, I usually tell everyone that, hey, you get what you pay for. Sometimes going the extra mile and, and spending a little bit extra will get you a better, more accessible product. But in this specific situation, I don't think that that is the best way to go. You don't yeah. have to get the biggest, baddest, cutest baby bathtub uh, no. to be 
we really don't. <laughs> yes, no, and 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 so I, I mean, like I'm actually kind of guilty of that. I fell in that trap where I thought that I did need all the bells and whistles to make it easier, thinking, oh, this will make it more accessible, but it backfired. Um, I didn't need a little baby shower head attached to the bath and everything, and I didn't need it to do like lights and bubbles and all. You know, like I didn't need it to do all that. It was Whoa. distracting me from from using my strengths it's too busy. so yes and and so once they got old enough and you're right once they sit up by then you yourself are a pro at it as well yep. but taking it slow keeping it sponge i know a lot of people still do the sink approach where yeah. they have a little uh bathtub that they find that fit in their sink especially if you have like a farmhouse style sink mm -hmm. that's even better because you don't have to necessarily bend over that was the thing i hated the most in the bathtub was yeah. my back Mm -hmm. girl would give i mean just whoo it was yeah. it was painful i was gonna say that i'm like you you kill your back for a couple of years <laughs> yes yes and so and for that so if anyone has a bad back you know if they're dealing with multiple um disabilities going on you know definitely go with the sink approach because it will save your back your back mm -hmm. in the long run and then the toddler uh once they graduated out of the sitting position and they start mm -hmm. to stand up and move around in the bathtub. You've just really got to be uh, on top of that and strict. I never took my hands off of the baby the whole yes. time. And it was right. constant, you know, sit down, sit down. You have to sit down. You know, you, you want to fall down and get hurt. Or you get those, um, those rubber mats for the bathtub also. Those no-slip rubber mats. And... Um, just yes. you know, never, never take your hands away, ever, because <laughs> you exactly you know, they just will stand up and <laughs> yes, so, yes. Um, very, very true. I did have an issue one night when uh, my son, I think he was about two, maybe mm -hmm. he was uh -huh. totally potty trained. He, my kids were really easy to potty train. Um, he might have been two and a half, maybe a little older than two. And uh, he uh -huh. went potty in the bathtub. No, number two. <laughs> yes, I, yep, I know. Yep. Been there, done that. And I didn't realize it at first. And he started screaming and standing up and screaming and standing up. So my husband was home, thankfully. And so I hollered for him and he came in and my husband was like, oh, goodness, <laughs> let's get him out of the water right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. Those are the worst. That's happened to me actually quite a bit with both my babies. They mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about warm water, but it. Yeah, it'll get it'll get things a moving. If thankfully if, my daughter is thankful you never did that. But <laughs> Yeah, especially so if they like to play happen. like once they get to the age where they like to play in the bathtub you know they're walking they're able to you know move groove just have a good old time in the bathtub i would let them play in there for for a while mm -hmm. and uh that's usually it's when i am you know getting giving them a bit more freedom and time in the bathtub that that's mm -hmm. when i end up <laughs> yep with a dirty mess yeah that's fun <laughs> Keep lots of All right, I'm, Yes, that's right. All <laughs> right, I'm going to check in with the, the chat. Let's see. Um, let's see. Dukes of Hazard. He says, how are you? I'm doing I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Uh, Blind Toes. Hello, Mr. Toes. Uh, we had a wonderful discussion on his channel a couple nights ago, Friday, or it wasn't nighttime. It was afternoon, but um, you can go check out Mr. Toes. He okay. has a fabulous um, channel. He is um, a dad as well, but a blind youtuber as well and just very fun very eclectic you never know um okay. jerry watch out man he is big into nunchucks and <laughs> all kinds of stuff and he loves spicy food so you see them do on his channel like they do um like what is it is it like um challenges i guess i don't know but anyway two or three of them will get together and they'll all kind of eat the same like really super spicy thing and it's just so fun and funny to watch so they they kind of trade around on each other's channels but 
Uh, they tried it, uh, Mr. Toes. You, I, I'm, I'm just not brave enough. I don't like spicy food. Jerry, do you like spicy food? Uh, no, no. My all, no, my kids do, but I do not. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. And then, um, what congratulations do you have? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm, I don't understand that comment, uh, Dukes of Hazard. Let's see. And then we have uh, barbecue. I'm going to turn my voice over on. Y'all know I always end up doing this. I'll try to like zoom in on my iPad to read the comments. And then I just end up like, forget it. I'm turning my screen reader on. I just don't have enough vision <laughs> to try to do it without my screen reader on. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, I read that one. Ah, uh, thank you for giving me hope with the algorithm. Yeah, hit the thumbs up, y'all. I so appreciate that. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Ray. Um, Ray is a very awesome, cool sub of mine. He loves to go barefoot. Ray, are you in the camp where you like being barefoot around the house, just around, out and about, or are you constantly wearing shoes? What do you are think? Are you asking me? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know how I love the topic of feet. <laughs> <laughs> While well, we talk about food, let's discuss feet after we discuss babies pooing in the bathtub. Uh, well, covering because the whole Arizona, I'm a barefoot girl. In, Yay! In the yeah. There you go, Ray. See, I got another one for you. <laughs> Ray is big, and he we we both talk about how we love to be barefoot and. And, you know, I don't know, me personally speaking, I don't know if it has anything to do with me being blind or visually impaired. Um, but I, I'm just like, I can always tell how dirty my house is. I can just, I don't know, I, I like feeling the vibrations of my kids. I love feeling the grass and my toes. I, I mean, I just love it. My It drives my husband crazy. He's like, you know, there's a reason why we have shoes use them. And I'm like, no, I, but you don't, I, I mean, it's like, he has a point for safety, you know, when we're outside, but when I'm in the house, I do like to be bare. I will wear socks a lot because like you said, I can tell how dirty my floor is. I have four dogs. And so, oh, wow. Yeah. If I wear socks and I pretend the floor's not dirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's see, Jojo, we said hello. Let's see who else we got. Julia Oliver. Hey, let me see. I think I see a comment here from you. We got that one. Oh, goodness. Okay. What is our best advice for friends? What is it? Okay, for friends of blind parents. So, okay. So I'm assuming she's coming at this as, okay, so what are your advice for our friends? Like, you know, we are the, we are the, obviously, <laughs> we're obviously the parents who are blind. Um, <laughs> what advice do we have for our friends? So in this situation, Julia, I, I am always, for example, I'm meeting new people all the time. You know, we're now we just moved to Tennessee and I'm still kind of getting to know my neighbors and we have a wonderful community of neighbors around us uh, surrounding, you know, three, four houses in this cul-de-sac. There's nine kids <laughs> in our cul-de-sac just around us. I mean, lots and lots of kids. And so communication is key, just like with all friends and family members and relationships, it, it just requires good open and honest communication. And so that means you letting you them know what your comfort level is, what your vision uh, levels are, how they can assist. And if they overstep any boundaries, just let them know and, and mm -hmm. don't take it too personal. Don't let it ruin any relationships or anything like that. You, you want to use it as a learning opportunity to grow your friendships. And I think a lot of people end up 
kind of damaging some of those relationships when they don't communicate even through the rough parts, even when the parts where we feel like our toes are being stepped on or someone's trying to like, you know, jump in and be the parent because they think we're not being a good, doing a good enough job, that kind of thing. So really um, just, just ask, ask who, you know, where your comfort levels are, where your boundaries are. You know, they've asked me, Hey, do you want me to tell you when your child is doing something that I don't agree with? And I'm like, Hey, I trust you. Like when they're out of my sight, you use your best judgment or just let me know what's going on and I'll let you know, or, you know, you know, just good communication because I'm always there. They're never outside without me. So, you know, just good, honest communication. It's, it, that to me is the golden rule for a lot of yeah. dynamics. So what do you think, Jerry? What would you yeah. advise? Like, have you had any difficulties with friends around you as parents? Uh, not really. Um, most of them are, they kind of watch how I do it, I guess. My kids are older yeah. now, but when they were smaller, they would, um, I don't want to say they were fascinated, but they were, they would just let me take the ropes and let me speak up if I needed something. They never really stepped out of bounds as far as that goes. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I guess, you yeah. know, they just saw that I was doing okay. Um, but I've never really had any, any issues with the parenting part of it. Um, uh, only the only other thing is like when we are out and about with friends, um, you, you just really have to speak up if you don't know what's going on. Right. Uh, let's say you are at a playground or you're, I get very uncomfortable in very busy places like zoos or water yeah. parks like that. I feel very just like, I just don't know what's happening. And so you just really have to speak up and be honest with the people you're with and just, um, ask, just ask them what's happening. I don't know. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think the best things that, I mean, I always appreciate it when people ask me, Hey, and, and many of the people that I've recently met the last few months, they've asked me tons of questions and I reinforce that. I let them, Hey, I appreciate you asking because yeah. all of us all agree that it's always better to ask than assume the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where a lot of misconceptions are born is from people not asking and seeking that education. Um, so I always reinforce it and say, thank you for asking, because mm -hmm. I would rather you always ask than remain curious or assume the wrong thing. Right. Um, so we have some other questions here. Let's see. Um, okay. So Dukes of Hazard, he's coming. Okay. So he's asking what our conditions are and agrees. I, I guess he's agreeing here. Auto products suck. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the automatic things. Like, yes. you're right. Like, oh my God, why is that turning on? I don't know. I didn't push a button. Um, <laughs> so I totally agree. So what conditions we have? I have Stargardt's disease. I was uh, started losing vision at age five and, and I've progressively lost more sight as I've gotten older and older, older, and then significant vision loss in the last five years with my, both my pregnancies. So I am now Ooh. about 20 over 2,400 in my right eye, I think, in my good eye and my bad eye, or I'm sorry, that is my bad eye. And then my good eye, I'm about 20 over 1,200. And the, when I was younger, the doctors, I remember telling me and my parents, you know, all through my teenage years, early 20s, oh, she'll never go beyond 20 over 200 or 20 oh. over 400 will be the worst. Well, 20 over 400 was a long time ago, y'all. <laughs> so wow. I do have some, um, I'm grateful and thankful for the remaining, what little peripheral vision I have. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, man, those doctors were way off. So, so you just have peripheral vision? Yep. I just have what's on the sides. So uh -huh. um, when people uh, like, um, it's, it, it's so hard to, explain now my eyes used to be about equal so it was a lot easier for me to appear as though i i 
it looked normal, I guess, mm -hmm. that I had. Uh, it was very easy to mask. I'll put it that way. My visual impairment, especially as a young adult and teen, mm -hmm. and, and I got really good at it because I did. <laughs> I wanted to mask it. Um, but now it's not so much uh, easy because my eyes do really look to the to the right or left, de mm -hmm. depending on what I'm trying to, to pick up. And they dart around. I don't have nystagmus where my eyes literally do kind of dance around. Mm -hmm. But I purposefully will look up, left, right, down, all around. You'll never see me look directly at the same spot multiple times. But it's my way, my brain picking up as much information I can with what little peripheral vision I have, yeah. Yeah. building that picture in my brain and trying to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So I do get eye fatigue extremely easily. I have photophobia and... Um, Charles Bonnet syndrome or Bonnet syndrome, depending on how you want to pronounce, pronounce it. If you want the French version, it's Bonnet syndrome. Um, um, and that's just where you have the visual hallucinations. Um, mm -hmm. I have that. Do you? I didn't know that's yes. what it was called. Yes. Um, and it kind of presents itself slightly differently for us all. For some, it's just one second, two seconds. For some, it can go on for a minute or more. You know, it's just mine are generally for like, you know, five, 10 seconds and then they kind of go away. But uh, annoying. That's for sure. I don't know if mine's constant or not because um, I like I, you know, my my eyes are prosthetic, but mm -hmm. in my brain, um, like right now, I see yellow, red, blue. And, you know, of course, I remember colors. So that's, that's <laughs> helps to know. But um, purple, uh, black, and they're just kind of like all over the place. Yeah. Like specks. Um, yeah. When I'm super tired, they are very, in very much intensified. Uh, yes. To where kind of it, overstimulated. Yes, I get headaches. It's like I want I don't want to look at that anymore. <laughs> yes. Kind of thing, you know. How do I turn it off? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I had no idea that's what it was called. Yes. There's there's all kinds of different things uh like that. But I feel like Charles uh Bonnet syndrome or Bonnet syndrome uh is is much more common and it's not as discussed and as much as people um as much as it probably should, because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people relate and have those experiences, but no one, has, it, it's it's not like that. It's it's rare that those things are the things we remember to ask when we're in the doctors. Like we have so many millions of questions, right? Oh, and yeah. then next thing you know, everyone's going home and I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to ask him. What are these things that keep happening to me? Yeah. And then they, you know, we, they never get a name for it, but it is, um, that's what it is. And it's, it's a very, very common, especially in uh, retinal conditions, those who le uh, lose their central vision loss, where they get the detail, they pick up the colors and mm -hmm. details and stuff from the cones and rods and within the eye. Um, okay, so and then w do you want to tell everybody your condition and what caused your sight loss? Uh, I had a very rare pediatric cancer when I was two and a half called by, by, blah, 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 called uh, bilateral retinoblastoma. Mm -hmm. um, super rare, especially in 1976. I was only one of two children in Arizona who had it. Um, wow. Not, it wasn't genetic. Um, just a mutated gene is what yeah. caused mine. Uh, unfortunately, I had it in both eyes. Um, oh, wow. So, okay. My grandfather actually discovered it. Speaking of giving a bath in the sink, uh, my mom was giving me a bath in the sink and mm -hmm. my grandpa was there and I looked up at the light and uh -huh. my eye, they call it, they also call it cat's eye syndrome oh. because my eye had a glow to it. Uh, oh. he, he, what he was looking at was the tumor. Oh. And my, my grandpa had a little bit of medical knowledge. And so he, uh -huh. he contacted an ophthalmologist, got me in right away. Uh, it was definitely the blastoma. So I, very, very long story. Basically, um, I had to have surgery to have my right eye removed right away when I was two and a half. Otherwise, it traveled directly to your brain. Mm-hmm. And that's not a good outcome. Uh, right. During that surgery, they were able to get a deeper look in 
So that was my my right eye that they removed first. Okay. During that surgery, they were able to get a very deep look into my left eye and found a tumor there as well. Uh, wow. It was my ear and it was laying against my nose. So it was kind of, they didn't see it with a regular exam. Oh, so they, wow. But the good part of that was it was smaller. So instead of removing my eye, you know, it's good and bad. Um, I went through many, many treatments of radiation because this was 1976. So the whole chemotherapy right. wasn't what they used at the time. So my parents had to fly me to California. We stayed there for six weeks while I had radiation at Stanford University. Um, then I was able to see with lots and lots of oh, issues because of the radiation, like, uh, my blood vessels would break a lot. I would have hemorrhages in my eye all the time. So oh, I would wow. have surgeries. Um, then one day I even had a cataract develop uh, when I was about 11. So I had that surgery and it wasn't too long after that surgery. Literally one day I was playing outside and a cat ran under our house. Our house was was uh, elevated a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the cat ran under the house. And so I bent down to see if I could see the cat. And when I stood up, there was just hundreds and hundreds of little red dots. Just I had to like feel my way back into the house because there was how many, that's how many dots I could see. And rushed me to the doctor. And what was happening was my retina as well as my blood vessels were deteriorating because of the radiation that I had several years before that. Oh, wow. Okay. So ultimately I did go totally blind and then um, my eye started looking sickly from lack of use. Um, yeah. It started, sh started shrinking basically. Yeah. yeah. My eye was dying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Muscle atrophy and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So my parents, God bless them, you know, they, they had a lot on their shoulders, had to make the decision to have my left eye removed because it was also causing a lot of pain, a lot of headaches. Yeah, um, yeah. It was just best to have it removed. And so I think I was 20, 22 or 23 when I had it removed. And so okay, that's, that's again, is a, the short version. <laughs> Yeah. Very, very long yeah. Story. Yeah. It's, you know, sometimes our, our, sometimes our journeys, you know, it's, it's kind of like everyone's like, Oh, what, what, what caused your blindness? And it's kind of like, sometimes I can sum it up with just Stargardt's disease or yeah. like you, it, 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 it's complicated. You can't complicated. sum it up in like a minute or two. It, it is like, mm -hmm. it's, it is a journey. It's a process and it doesn't, there sometimes is no one cause. I have a friend of mine um, and she's got like three or four different causes. So she's like, well, which one would you like to learn about? You know, I mean, <laughs> pick one. Um, <laughs> and and um, so it's so funny. I want to give a shout out to Paul's, Paul's um, Blind Soup for the Soul. Oh, I know Paul. Yeah. yeah hi, Paul. Um, he's in the house. Let's blind grilling is here. My daughter said blind grilling is out. Hi, Chris. Yes. Hi. Let's see. Um, yes. 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 I agree. Uh, yes. So Jojo, I did not know deaf as she is deaf blind and also loves to be barefoot. I think the tactile, the biofeedback that we get through our feet when barefoot. And I can't imagine if I could not hear and had a hearing impairment. In addition, I would, I would be barefoot all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're going to the store, put your shoes on. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Um, he's. Did you hear him? He says, "Love loves your." Is it orange chicken? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, love your orange chicken. Thanks, Chris. Oh wow, interesting. Wow. Wow. People are talking about having um, extra toes and such removed. Um, oh, wow. 
I've never, that's the first for me. I've never <laughs> heard of people, um, you know, I've heard of people born without all yeah. 10 fingers or 10 toes, but not extra ones. Yeah. That's, I, I know it's possible and I, I know I actually, I have heard of it, but I just have never like interacted with anyone. <laughs> who, yeah. I mean, it's like, those are the things that like people don't like go around announcing. So I, mean, now that I know, <laughs> but very interesting comments in the chat. Very, very yeah. interesting. So let's move on to some cooking because here's cooking. where, yes, this is where I want to learn from the pros. Um, from you, from Chris, from everybody, because I know I'm capable. I know I'm able. You are, girl. <laughs> I just don't like it. I'm like, I, I'm just, it's just like, I feel like at the end of the day, I really love, you know, the, the whole nurturing feeling and the, and the feeling that you get when you put it, put something prepared on the table and you're feeding your family. Mm -hmm. love love that warm fuzzy feeling but i am not a patient person <laughs> i don't like following like step by step by step by step process and i also hate searching for things in like in the grocery store for ingredients especially if it's something i've never heard of or if the ingredients aren't exactly word for word <laughs> but my screen reader says it should be. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, is this what I need to get or not? Is is wait? It says three point five ounces, but this is three ounces. I'm confused, <laughs> and I just I can't take it. I can't, and I that's the part where I'm like, you know what? So I am. I just can't do it, y'all. I'm so not what a good cook. Be, what is a what is a meal that you do make for your kiddos? What what is something that you cook for your kids? Well, let's see. So I have a three and a five year old. So they, we have entered the age of severe pickiness. And Mr. Toes mm -hmm. and I, we were talking about this on his channel the other day. We have very picky, picky eaters. So if it's not chicken nuggets, fish sticks, macaroni and cheese, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, if I'm lucky, <laughs> uh, you know, just those the five pizza, the, the pizza, you know, just the basics. It's like a variation of those few things for lunch and dinner every day of the week. Um, it, that's, I am so lucky if I can get them to branch out of that. I can't even get them to eat spaghetti or eggs, scrambled eggs. And my son used to love scrambled eggs. And then all of a sudden he's like, no, no, no. And no one will, will never touch him again. So <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> Um, but I am starting to explore crockpot meals. I used to get into crockpot uh, meals, but the thing that I think that is really a barrier for me is my husband was vegan up until about six, seven, eight months ago. And now he is no longer vegan, but still vegetarian. Oh. And so because of that, I feel like it really kind of limits a lot of my choices that I would enjoy fixing and preparing for the family. So I'm, you know, we stick to vegetarian tacos um, is something I, I've I made last night and um, just different things like that. But I'm trying to explore more crock pot meals, uh, now, especially now that I can incorporate dairy products. So that's kind of my issue. And one of the reasons why I'm just, I, would say, I just yeah. don't enjoy it. I would think cooking vegetarian would be easier than total yeah, vegan. Because like, vegan's like no cheese, no no dairy, no anything, right? Uh, vegan, yes. No mm -hmm. meat, no cheese, no dairy. Yeah. I wouldn't so know all soy. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. So we substitute, um, you know, soy based products. Uh, we not, you know, non dairy and, you know, really substitutions have come a long way. Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as doing a, a decent job and excuse me, in matching flavors and seasonings, but sometimes it's just a textural issue that I have most often, but I'm not a big, I grew up a meat and potatoes girl and y'all, I'm too. still a meat and potatoes girl. Um, I remember when we were dating, he's like, um, 
do you think you could ever give up your chicken and cheese and no. stuff? And I was like, uh, no, sir. And if that's a problem, we need to end this date right now. <laughs> no. And then, um, so yeah, so I'm still a meat and potatoes eater. And so there's been most times we usually just end up preparing our own yeah. thing. You yeah, know, that that's kind of how we function. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. Um, but you know, we have found a few things that we we have common ground on and, and prepare and eat as a family. But with the kids now entering the world of pickiness, that has really come to a screeching halt. So <laughs> I'm really I'm really anxious um, to to explore more crock pot things and and pray that my kids will jump on the bandwagon soon. Well, well I happen to have a whole playlist on my channel full of crock pot recipes. I know, I know. But most of them are meat. Uh, yes. But you could do, you know, like uh, just a spinach ravioli type thing. Since he's not doing vegan anymore, that kind of right. opens you up for more yes. more recipes. But I bet you there's some good channels out there that are, are specific to that. Yeah. I don't know any offhand, but I bet there is. Yeah, there are. There's, I mean, there's um, this one channel that I really like. It's called Cheap Lazy Vegan. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Name. Yeah, great, great channel. Um, she was, she was very helpful. But yeah, now that he's kind of just switched to vegetarian, you know, a lot more doors are open and I'm definitely able to try a lot more of other recipes. But your desserts and stuff, I mean, it's so funny because he says he's vegan, but our, our one of our rules is is like if we're out at a restaurant or if we're at someone else's house or whatever and it's like a yummy yummy dessert just don't tell him what the ingredients are y'all <laughs> what he doesn't know doesn't hurt him and that rule still exists today so when it comes to <laughs> the sweets and stuff especially on your channel the, there was one time you made like oh i've been wanting to make the snickerdoodle cookies and there oh. was a pie and there was like yeah. oh my, you've done so many yummy goodies that that's that's something that's getting me excited i'm willing to i think i'm going to go there first i think i think you could do it yeah, yeah. you could call me well i'll talk you through it <laughs> yes yes yeah we'll do a live stream we'll do it yeah. like cook like cook with us y'all <laughs> absolutely two blind cooks we could do there it there you go <laughs> yeah, that'll be so much fun. Might as well get Chris in on it too. Chris blind grilling, he could do it too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On StreamYards, you can have like up to six people. So I mean, okay. we might as well. This is all new to me. I don't, I don't, I've never done this on StreamYard before. Yeah. All right. Let's see what's going on in the chat. 11, 14 PM. Ray JR. Got to go oh, bye, Ray. Sorry we missed you. Bye, Ray. I'll be back. Hope you and Jerry stay there. 11, 15 p.m. Jojo and Splizzle. If you want, I can give you some tips. I sent you a message on Instagram already. <laughs> okay, great, Jojo. Thank you. Okay. 11, 16 p.m. Julia Oliver. Have you tried any meal kit services? Meal kit services. So Julia Oliver wants to know, have we tried any meal kit services? I have not. It's something that we are thinking about. You Have you? No, mm -mm. I haven't. It's something we've um, considered in the past, uh, but it was one of those things where it was kind of a financial thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's still kind of pricey, I feel yeah. like. I don't know. Is it just me? No, it's pricey for, for a family of four. It's yeah. Cheap. Especially when I have two picky eaters and a, and a vegetarian. It's, it's oh, just, yeah. yeah, we haven't really... I mean, it's something that we're interested in. I think a new meal service just started up that is geared more towards uh, vegetarians, gluten-free, lactose intolerant, you know, those type of special diets. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we just haven't gone there yet. It would probably we're be, curious. It would probably be like 8 to 10 $12 per meal, wouldn't it? Yeah, I can't remember. And I think it also just sort of depends on what promotional deal you jump in on, yeah. too. Um, mm -hmm. Which, speaking of y'all, Amazon Prime Day starts tomorrow. I go, oh, I've got my shopping list ready. Um, I, I would I would be hurting y'all without my Amazon Prime. Oh, leadership. me too. Totally. I think that is like one of those blind VIP. Like, I think that is 
a must have um, for those of us who have to just order things in bulk because we can't get in the car and go, you know, run and grab some toilet paper when we're running out, right? Like we got to stock up on that stuff. <laughs> so. Once I learned how to use the Amazon app, I was hooked. And the other night I didn't sleep very good. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, hmm, let's get on Amazon and see what I can't live without. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, let me see. I'm like way behind in the chat, y'all. So I'm so sorry. I just realized that. Okay. Oh, um, maybe I'm not. Hold on. That's right, Paul. Oh, yeah, we got there. Wow. So, jo did you hear that? Can you hear yeah. that, Jerry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we got. Oh, sorry. I'm like repeating. Okay, there we are. Yeah, I mean, I've heard they're good too. It's, um, I've heard freshly. I know someone that uses freshly. And I yeah. thought about doing that just for me because, you know, there's times when I'm like, I really need to eat healthier, but my kids yeah. and my husband, while my kids like, my kids like both, you know, healthy and not healthy. And uh, yes. it, it gets hard to, I end up just eating whatever they eat. And I, I don't cook very healthy. If you haven't noticed, um, <laughs> I'm not a healthy cook. I know how to, but I yeah. just don't. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, bring on the meat and potatoes and the rice and the pasta and the cheese and the gravy. And, but, mm -hmm. um, I've thought a lot about freshly because my, my hairdresser uses freshly and I, okay. I'm into it just for me. Like if you're just mm -hmm. doing it just for like one person and not a family of four, that might be yeah a better deal, obviously, but I've yeah. heard they're pretty good. Yeah. And, but it's also one of those things where it's kind of like our schedule is also getting to be kind of busy. We have a three and a five year old. We try to take them to a park every day. We try to like in the summertime, my husband is a, as a college professor. So oh. his schedule lightens up pretty significantly through the summertime. He's, he's a doctor at students. So he's taking classes and he teaches through the summer, but nowhere near the heavy load that he has through the fall and spring. And so we try to make up for, you know, and have as much family time as we can through the summer. Mm -hmm. And so my, pr our problem is, is sometimes we will get stuck out and we're like, okay, I guess we're going to be, you know, stopping at a restaurant somewhere this evening or, you know, whatever. And so it's one of those things where our schedules are so chaotic that I would feel like, okay, wait, we've got a meal delivery at the house. We got to get home and, you know, oh, I need yeah. 30, 45 minutes to prepare that or all that food's going to get wasted. You know what yeah. I mean? It's kind of like, yeah. that's the unpredictability of our lives right now with our kids and just, you know, the freedom of, well, let's, okay, y'all want to go to a playground, let's go. Or, oh, we're going to go to a pool today and not knowing when we're going to get back, that kind of thing. I, I would just feel me. terrible. That's fun. Huh? kind of spontaneous just kind of yeah right now we flow. we yeah we kind of I'm kind of at the mercy of of when my husband says okay I've got I've got two hours let's go <laughs> I'm like oh okay okay everybody get your shoes on let's go it's like kind of like fly by the seat of our pants at times I feel like you know based on when he's got the time to to do so so that's one that's one another reason why we've hesitated to do it all right, what else do we have? <laughs> oh, chicken salsa, that's good. Hello. <laughs> air frying. I that's actually on my list to buy tomorrow on Amazon Prime. I want a good air fryer because my kids. You know, I mean, French fries, chicken nuggets, like all the stuff that's perfect for air fryer. So I, I think I'm going to break down and get one. You my haven't mom just done got it? one. Yeah, my mom got one. She really likes it. I need to yeah. know which one is blind friendly, uh, not digital. Ditto. <laughs> I know they have them. I just don't know which ones. 
Yes. And, you know, I was following a thread on Facebook the other day uh, regarding Instapots mm -hmm. with the same type of question because I was, I'm still on the fence. Do I want to do Instapot, air fryer? I think there's even one that's like all and yeah. like all the big shebang. And a lot of people in that thread were suggesting the, the Instapots air fryers that are compatible uh, with apps. Them yeah. with their phones because then you can using your screen readers, voiceovers, all that stuff, uh, access and control them via your app. And I didn't know they had the air fryers like that. I knew they had the the Instapots like that, but I didn't know about yeah. The I don't know for sure. Don't quote me on that, but I would I know if the Instapot is an air fryer all in one, surely there is an Instapot air fryer that has that capability, you know, that that mm -hmm. that specific. I don't know if there is an air fryer alone that does, but that is something I'm definitely going to be researching tomorrow and seeing if I can find it. So if you all are interested, keep a heads up, um ask me later and I'll let you know if I discover one. But yeah. Um, I definitely like the appliances that at least have, if anything, a tactile button, something that I can put a bump yep. dot on to, you know, somehow f give myself a tactile indicator on how to operate it. Mm -hmm. Those touchless screens. Oh my gosh, y'all. I can't They're do terrible. it. I can't stand it. Yeah. Or when they just have like the indicators on them and it's like, it, with the it, it's just like lights are and stuff it's 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 almost like there's too many bells and whistles just give me like yeah. a few like two three buttons that's it that's all i need and let's do yeah, it yeah our let's oven uh, when we remodeled our kitchen oh, yeah. we got an oven and we were super excited about it it was digital but what we didn't realize because i thought i could just put braille on the you know the numbers and everything and operate it just fine uh -huh. Well, it's so sensitive that you could touch it with a feather and it would oh. take your hand. So there's no yeah. time to feel around for your number or oh, cook yeah. whatever. Um, so unfortunately, when it comes to my oven, I have to have help with it. And it drives mm -hmm. me crazy. I don't like asking for help to use my oven. Right. <laughs> but it can't be... Yes changed out either uh not right now not no not right now because the way our cabinets are built for that oven mm -hmm. um and we even looked up is there a way to uh convert it so that it would be wi-fi compatible and yes. it's old, too old for that so yeah so i'm looking for like, like a countertop um of an air fryer type thing all in one yeah got huh. knobs actual dials that click <laughs> yes you know it's that's one of the things that's frustrated me so much over the years i have i've lived in a lot of different places we've bought three or four different homes already um and i've had electric stoves gas stoves and in one house we actually did purchase new kitchen appliances for it and i splurged and got the ADA compliant oven and it was great because the knobs were in the front they were easily tactile I, like I, I could label them more easily and it was just it was all around better and so I always recommend people to yeah. try to look into the ADA compliant ovens and if you can get them but they are great for the blind visually impaired community as are. well uh, yeah. for as you know for those who are uh, physically disabled in other ways but mm -hmm. it I just for I mean if anything the thing that I hate about I have an electric stove now it is not ADA compliant obviously and I just hate reaching over and feeling the heat from the burners over mm -hmm. my arms like I know it's there and I'm not going to touch it but just not being able to see and knowing you're reaching over something crazy crazy hot yeah. to feel around and explore i'm just like i don't know it's just a, it's a design that i don't like and of course turning the oven on you got to count how many times i hit the degree button to right. like, <laughs> it degrees by five and i'm like five ten fifty twenty twenty five and i have to count it every <laughs> single time that i <laughs> please don't interrupt me <laughs> yes i'm like okay kids quiet mommy gotta count <laughs> it's all start over <laughs> 
Yeah, so the world of, of ovens ha still has a way to go to keep in mind the blind community. And, you know, yeah. we're larger, I feel like, than people give us credit for. You know, we are a very small niche, but so many people in their geriatric senior years develop sight loss mm -hmm. but because it is age related i feel like it's it does it, the numbers are kind of skewed a bit i feel like yeah. if we did count all the seniors out there that are still cooking in their kitchen <laughs> but yeah. they may not be working in the workforce or you know um I guess registering and, and 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 asking for rehabilitation services from the state or what have you, you know, like getting their number counted in the national averages of blind mm -hmm. and visually impaired. I, you know, I, I feel like the numbers would be higher once we really start to incorporate those, but they are part of our population as well as they're part of our low vision blind community as well. And they need help in the kitchen too. And they're yeah. trying to use the same ovens we are and getting burned and struggling to get the right degrees. So, yeah. um, so yeah, if anyone knows anyone making ovens, like tell them. <laughs> Like keep us in mind. Pretty nice, seventy nine. Mm -hmm. I said, I absolutely love you, Jerry. You're an, such an amazing and upbeat person. I binge watch your cooking channel. You're an amazing cook. I love how you rock your kitchen. How your kiddos <laughs> help. Much love to you. Oh, thank you. Kate's Aww. reading the comments over here too. <laughs> Yay! Good. Thank you, Kate. Kate, you can be our comment moderator. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you. That was very nice. I thought I recognized your name. Kate, are there any questions um, that you see in the um, chat that we have missed? I'm scrolling through the comments right now. I don't, I don't think we missed anything. Okay. I saw um, somebody mm -hmm. was talking about HelloFresh uh, was a good, also a good meal. Um, 62. Thing. $62 a week for HelloFresh. Says so HelloFresh, oh, $62 a week, vegan, gluten-free, et cetera. Yeah. Oh. That's a, that's, Let's see. That's not too bad considering you wouldn't have to go do the shopping. <laughs> so we know yeah. how much I love shopping. <laughs> yeah. Grocery yeah. Shopping. And I mean, it's, and it's like proportioned out for you already, mm -hmm. you know. Things so. and everything. So um, tell us in the comments. Let's, let's have a question. Let's have a poll. What is your favorite kitchen cooking gadget tool? what have you. It can be as small as from an ice cream scooper, pizza cutter, to an Instapot, to your oven. <laughs> I don't care how big, how small, whatever. What is your favorite gadget tool? What have you? Jerry, why don't you, why don't you go first? What's the thing that you, that you love and use, use the most? My mixer, my, my KitchenAid mixer. Oh, yeah. And one of those. what, Caitlin? Can opener. That's not Can my favorite. Can opener. That's not my favorite. <laughs> Can but you can't, but you couldn't live without it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, and my chopper, my um, uh, chop, chop wizard knockoff. <laughs> Those are my two favorites. I, I love, I don't love my oven because even though it's an awesome oven, I can't use it without help. So I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't love my oven. It's a problem. Yeah. yeah, it is a problem. Um, but yeah, probably my, my mixer and my chopper. Yeah. I, I love, um, I recently discovered collapsible funnels, which if, if anyone has seen, I, I posted a video, I don't know, probably a month or so ago. I've been, I'm really late on, on getting videos up on my channel here recently, I but I remember that video. It's like kitchen tools and stuff, but one of them, so I had, I've discovered several of favorites, kitchen shears, because, because I mean, I've almost cut my thumb off. You guys, like I have a major scar across my left thumb because I was holding a potato and I was, I was chopping up chunks into, um, a pot of water and the knife went straight through my, my thumb. And I, so to this day, I'm like, okay, can I use a pizza cutter for this? Or, or can I use my kitchen shears for it? Like what other tools do I have 
before I go to the knife. <laughs> and it's not that I'm afraid of the knife, but I'm just like, okay, is there anything that's going to be easier for me uh, than picking up a sharp knife? A lot of people are like, oh, just get you some of those, you know, um, gloves that, you know, are, that you can't oh, cut yeah. through, you know, but the gloves you and stuff. Feel, can you? Yeah, it, yeah, that's the thing. And, and <laughs> so I just recently purchased some because I wanted to test this here. I wanted to give them a chance. And so I'm going to mm -hmm. do a video on it. I do now have a, um, cutting, uh, a, a cutting glove and it is a, th it is thick, but I still have my right hand that I, that I can still feel things mm -hmm. from. So I, I don't know. I'm going to give it a try. And do a video on it. We'll see. I don't but think you can use a pizza cutter to cut a potato. No, not a potato, but that would make me more afraid than a knife. <laughs> yeah, no, no, obviously not a potato. I mean, typically, you know, when it comes to potatoes, what do I well, I love using the the uh, paring knives, the um peelers to peel yeah. the potatoes and stuff. But yeah, no, I usually always do have to go to the knives for the potatoes. But for, for the smaller thing, other fruits and veggies, you know, yeah. Um, especially if they've been cooked for a while and they're already kind of softened. Mm -hmm. Um but I love, oh, here's another thing. I do like using my apple slicer for oh, potatoes yes. to make potato wedges. I do oh. do that. Yeah, I like my apple slicer. Well, I did till Kate broke it. I did not break Kate. It. it fell apart. It's old. <laughs> yes, that, that, the uh, apple slicer, the egg slicer. I love those things. I'm, yeah, not, so I'm not afraid of knives. I do, I do pretty well with them. Um, mm hmm uh but they do do you have the knife that has the guide on it for different sizes i don't have that anymore i used no, to no i don't um, i don't have that tell me about it what are you talking about i'm not sure i know maxi aids sells them there's okay. probably a couple different places that sell them now because maxi aids is old school but i know they're still around um, they are mm -hmm. it has an adjustable a guide on the side of it for different oh. sizes of you know tomatoes okay onions i don't have it anymore but i've gotten really comfortable with knives um uh -huh. not that's i'm not careless with them i you know i don't like using oh, what do they call those great big kitchen knives those great big ones um oh my like gosh, butcher what? knives like, well, like a butcher knife where i am the one that Brittany had here i can't remember what it was called but it's got gigantic knife and i will never ever touch those <laughs> yeah. but um like that's why i like that chopper you still have to use your knife to say cut your potato in half i have mm -hmm. a video on that on uh i forgot what i titled it but it's basically kitchen tools that that would be helpful to the blind yeah i remember that video um you still have to use your knife to cut to cut the potato smaller but then you uh -huh. can just lay it on the grid and close your chopper down on it and then you've got you know, it's more like dices, not so much chunks, but I really like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember, um, is, are they called mandolins? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. That. So um, this is kind of a sneak peek into like a future video idea because I've been thinking about this for a while. So it's 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 serendipitous that it's coming up now um so i'm going through the currently through the rehabilitation uh centers here for the blind in tennessee trying to get my skills brushed up making sure i'm making you know the right choices decisions and 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 doing what i need to do to up my game uh in the kitchen and in life and because i'm uh, hopefully getting back hopefully going back into the workforce once the oh. kids go to school mm -hmm. and so anyway uh the the lady was over and she's like oh do you do you have a mandolin i was like no that's actually something i have never had i've never explored i just big like blade kind of things like that of just uh i just yeah you know what i mean I'm, i and, <laughs> yeah and, I and she got me one and I'm so thankful she got me the style that she did. I'll try to to describe it to y'all because in my head, I was thinking the ones that were like where it's a big long blade and it's like it goes down vertically, like the, from up to down, and you're slicing things, you know, 
in that direction, kind of like a, a like a paper cutter that you see in the office. Like it's a big, mm-hmm. you know, this oh. big, like just I don't know, um, like off with their head, like the machines that like <laughs> come down, you know. And so I thought it was like that kind of thing, and <laughs> and she got me one that you like you hand you go um, you hold it with your left. Well, I'm right handed, so I'm holding it with my left hand, and it's and the blade is horizontal, and you just literally push things down on the blade mm-hmm. and and rub it across. Yeah. And I'm very excited to try that because I was I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna easily slip my thumb under a blade and just whoa, you know, push that blade down <laughs> and my thumb is going to disappear or something. You know, like <laughs> I was thinking the worst thing with them. So I've never purchased one in the past because they were just the idea just scared the heck out of me. I don't know if I've seen too many like off with her head videos and just made too many um associations you know from those movies <laughs> with now the good with, mandolins i believe they come with a uh like a little um oh my gosh what am i trying to say some something that you hold on to that grabs like say the potato so you're holding the plastic gripper i guess yes so that your hand's not directly on the potato my yes. husband has one of those and he wasn't using the little holder and he sliced his thumb big time because he wasn't following the directions. <laughs> yes. And my rehabilitation um, counselor warned me the same thing. She's like, now, and this thing goes yes. with it. And it's very important. And yes. she showed me how to use that little topper that you can, it kind of like has prongs on the bottom yeah, that, that kind of like that grabs onto the vegetable, fruit, cheese, whatever it is. And yeah, you, you push down on it, which then pushes mm-hmm. down on the fruit so that as you're going across the mandolin, it's cutting and and then it'll just cut you know it, it'll catch on that before it'll catch on your hands yeah 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 but anyway yeah i'm anxious to try that um uh little gadget so and uh double-sided spatulas also mm-hmm. a new find I, that was a, on i think i've talked about that in in, in that video of mine too I, yeah. i've discovered a new love for double-sided spatulas yes so what what about in the comments? Kate, are you still there? Are you seeing any of the comments? Yes. I see a lot of people are right. It's like y'all are chatty tonight or something because there's like <laughs> some yeah. big messages in here. See any more questions? Um, trying to catch up to the comments. She said we have 13 people. Yeah. Okay. I Paul's blend that. soup was the one I see last. Paul, do you Paul, do you do anything in the kitchen? He has an an awesome wife. I think I think he said they've been married like five, seven years, something like that. Um, let's see. What's your favorite recipe, Jerry? What's your favorite thing to make? Bread. I love Homemade to make bread. bread. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like yeah. fresh, like wheat bread, white bread, or like the banana nut bread or the uh, sandwich bread, uh, white bread. I just recently picked up the stuff to try to make um, whole wheat bread or multigrain bread. Oh, but whole wow. wheat bread is my absolute favorite thing to make or pizza dough. Chocolate. Um, but I do make a chocolate chip walnut banana bread. <laughs> it's oh, God, really that good. <laughs> I need, I just threw some uh, bananas in the freezer tonight just for that. Just so eventually when it's not 118 degrees outside, I will uh, uh, set my oven up bake. for a while. So it takes like an hour and a half to bake banana bread. Um, but I, I, I'm not a big baker as far as like uh, cakes and things like that. But I like to make anything that's got a dough, like um, yeah. pie dough or... I do like to do cookies. I prefer to do cookie bars because it's less time consuming, but I do Yeah. on occasion, go ahead and make, you know, spend three hours making cookies, <laughs> but um, br- bread's definitely my favorite thing to do. Yeah. I don't have that kind of patience <laughs> and I'm one of those people where it's like, I'll put it in the oven. And then I'll get distracted or my kids are like, oh, let's go outside. And then next thing you know, I'm like, oh, my God, the house is going to burn down. I <laughs> forgot. I've got something to do of it. You know, I'm just I'm just like I can set a reminder on every Alexa in my house. <laughs> 
Yeah. And, Trust and me, I, I will find some way of missing that alert. <laughs> I absolutely know that I'm not going anywhere. You know, I will. Yeah. It's been a while since I've made some bread, actually, and I, I miss it. Kids miss it. Um, yeah. I did do pretzels one day. Um, oh, oh my which gosh, I, said, I didn't know you could do pretzels. Oh my gosh, they're so good. <laughs> but really? I don't like rolling them out into the pretzel shape. That just takes way oh, too yeah. long. That's where I'm impatient. It's like, oh yeah. Um, so I could, I would just do like pretzel sticks or something like that, but hot, mm. you know, hot, soft pretzel sticks slathered in butter. <laughs> mm, that does sound good. Yeah. Anything with dough. I like it. I'm pretty much maxed out at no bake cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Love that video. <laughs> So yeah, I'm um, no bake cookies, man. I, I've got a few things that I have in my wheelhouse and I don't really, I just don't have the, the time to branch out. My, my problem is, is it's funny because I've had a lot of, um, in previous blind community chats, we've talked about hobbies and, you know, things that we, we do. And, you know, so many people I, I see in the support groups on Facebook and, and such that are like, okay, you know, I've lost so much sight, the hobbies that I used to be able to do, I can't do anymore. What do people do for hobbies and blah, blah, blah. blah. And especially during COVID time, you know, I think everybody mm -hmm. was struggling for healthy indoor entertainment. And yeah. my problem is, is the opposite. I have too many hobbies and um cooking is one of those things where it's kind of like not your hobby <laughs> yeah it's 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 like i feel like i would give it a chance more if i didn't feel torn in so many other directions like i have the desire i want to learn i want to cook yummy stuff because it it is sounds so delicious and so good and i think i could do it but my problem is is like sometimes it just seems so time consuming and i don't like the cleanup that i oh the cleanup is more, i don't like the cleanup <laughs> yeah i'm just like you know it's like man those cookies are good but who's gonna do that cleanup me yeah oh, it's not called know, like my mama's messy kitchen for nothing <laughs> that's right i, I figured that i, was I like, don't even oh, show clever. it when it's messy i've had comments like that why are you called messy kitchen your kitchen's never messy i'm like uh, for yeah. videos i don't leave it messy but trust me like today i hadn't done dishes for like three days <laughs> yeah so like, thank Jared, god for dishwasher dishes. yeah yeah I yeah yeah. So, I mean, my, yeah, my problem is I just have so many other hobbies that distract me and I end up procrastinating on improving. You'd rather do kitchen. something else. <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, I don't know. I think it's, it's one of those things because it's interesting. My mom and my sister are great cooks and they've got the knack for it they've got like it's kind of like you know how when people talk about gardening and they're like oh that person's got a green thumb and then the next oh, person's yeah. like, oh I, you give me a plant and it's going to die in three days no, um, me too. you know i i mean i'm i'm pretty good at gardening but i mean at least i don't kill everything but <laughs> i don't have the knack for kitchen so it's like as soon as i try something it just never comes out right and so i don't know i'm just one of those people i'm i i am clearly a work in progress in <laughs> so well, we're here to help each other out yes yes so that's why i love your channel because it's like it gives me the inspiration to like okay yeah yeah i think i can do that i, I, and, I need well, to, I and it looks a, so good i've noticed some things because i've been blind a long time a really long uh -huh. time and so i forget you know of course i know the purpose of my channel is to help other people who are losing their vision or, or people like you who don't really like to cook, but want to cook, you know, to show you, yes, you can do it. But what I forget is I'm not new at this. And so mm. I forget sometimes to describe what I'm doing or um, like I said, I don't have a lot of uh, adaptive equipment for the kitchen for the blind. I, I only have, well, I have one double-sided spatula that I got many, many years ago from independent mm -hmm. living program. Yeah. It doesn't even have the adjustable thing on it anymore. <laughs> yeah. So the other double-sided tongs I have, I just picked up at Big Lots. Um, uh, I don't really have, like I put Braille on some of my spice jars, the, the spices I use the most. Um, 
And I tell my husband, don't touch him because he's a cook also. So <laughs> um, what do I have that's, that's a, you know, the, the kitchen tool video that I did was just basic kitchen stuff that you can pick up at Walmart that I, I mean, think are very helpful. You're talking thermometer. Yes, Chris from Blind Grilling, he sent me a talking meat thermometer because I didn't have one. I just got um, one of those myself. I'm anxious to use it. Yeah, it because I told the lady, um, the, the, the rehabilitation counselor that I'm working with to help me in the kitchen to kind of up my game and, and get me the tools I need. She's like, do you have a, a talking thermometer? I was like, no. And in fact, you know, I've never really made a roast. I've never made a Thanksgiving turkey. I've never done. And it's because I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. Like when that is so far out of my realm that I feel like, and no one has taught me. And I feel like, and I was telling the lady this, I was like, you know, I can in my life, you know, I've had people try to teach me and, but they're like, and you do this and then you, you do that. And they're, and they're, and I'm like standing over their shoulder. I'm one of those where I have to do it with my own hands to yeah. really feel comfortable at it. And yeah. it's great when other blind and visually impaired people, like I know you said that, you know, you forget sometimes to verbalize, like we I all do. forget from time to time, especially when we're in our own comfort zones. Yeah. But when you do meet other people that are really good and, and, and remember to verbalize things in a way that is helpful, that does definitely do it for me and help me. Oh, by the way, I love Chris's comment here that hunger is a good motivator. Yes, sir, Chris, <laughs> you are correct. Um, it's yeah. not, and I try to That's, talk a lot in my videos because as a blind person, one thing that drives me crazy and it's, you know, not anybody's, I don't want to say it's not their problem, but when I'm watching other cooking channels that play music through what they're doing, I have no uh, idea what they're doing. No yes, clue what the B-roll kind of thing. Yeah. 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 yeah I didn't even know that's what it was called. And so, <laughs> yeah. so I, yeah. um, I just try to, to talk and then I, I'm like, Jerry, you're not even, you've got to tell people what you're doing. And so I, right. I just get in the zone and, and forget. So yeah. if, if you watch my videos and you don't know what I'm doing, just leave it in the comments section because I might forget to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, but I feel like that's kind of like also part of my problem, but I, I have, um, a talking meat thermometer too, and I'm anxious to, to, to start using it. So, um, but yeah, I love that. Um, let's see Dukes of Hazard. He says he makes a really mean meatloaf. I've made one or two meatloafs, um, in my life. And I cheated because I used, what was it? It was like a stuffing mix mm -hmm. that it, it was like a recipe on the backs of a stuffing um, box. I can't remember, but it was just like to make stuffing do this and then to make meatloaf do this. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> let's explore. And it was good. It was decent. But, you know, it's kind of like, I feel like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I want to do I want to do the real thing. I don't want to, you know, cheat and cut corn. Well, I, ha I have a video on meatloaf. <laughs> do you? I, do. I need to go. I need to go look at that. You know, <laughs> that's the problem though. I'm the only meat eater and I don't think, I don't know if my kids would eat it. And so to make, that's part of my problem. It's just like yeah. making big meals like that. And then knowing that I'm on, the only adult yeah. in the house that that's going to be able to eat it. Yeah. That would yeah. be very hard. I don't know how I would do that either. You and Chris can, can put your hand, heads together and like <laughs> teach well, me how to make some veggie, you vegetarian. Make little, um, you can make little meatloaf uh, cups in muffin, in muffin, blah, 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 in a muffin pan. Get it out, Jerry. Jeez. Yeah. Um, and then you could freeze them. What? You just blew my mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've heard of that with egg, like egg muffins. And I tried doing uh, egg muffins and freeze it, And that was an utter disaster. Okay. I tried that too. And it was an epic fail. It did not. Yeah. What I is the trick up, with egg muffins, y'all? Because it is not as easy. This is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, it is not as easy. I don't know what these people are forgetting to say in their YouTube video because I'm doing exactly what they described in their YouTube video and it is coming out nothing like what Terrible. they My said. Kids really it. They're like, Mom, I'm sorry, but you. <laughs>
<laughs> That's hilarious. So oh meatloaf in a muffin pan, huh? Mm -hmm. I did not know. Yeah. You could even top it with a little mashed potato on the top too. <laughs> oh, now that is something my kids do eat is mashed potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. But oh my God, the process of peeling all the potatoes and then boiling. Like that's where I'm just like, I don't have the patience. It's like, well, if I, can't... I love a good, you know, peel the potato, do that, all that kind of mashed potato. But I have to admit, and I didn't think I would ever use them. I have bought the Betty Crocker instant potatoes in a box and they're pretty good. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh oh, where'd she go? We lost her. Uh oh. How'd we lose her? No, yeah, we're still alive. Where, where Hi, I don't know where she went. Oh, are you there? Oh, there you there are. are. Sorry, it just kicked me off. Dead going at stream yards. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're still alive, but no. So yeah. I, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I, with mashed potatoes and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, I love doing it. I love making them. It's just the, um, process. I don't know. I don't have patience for it. I don't have the patience for that either. And, uh, and holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving, I don't do the instant. I'll do the real thing, but. Oh, okay. Um, what, what are you laughing at? Paul's blind soup for the soul said the munchies are even better motivator. <laughs> <laughs> the what? Oh, I need to go back and find Paul, that. Paul said munchies are even a better motivator. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like almost midnight here and I'm like ready to go raid my refrigerator now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you listen to music when you like, what do you do to help pass the time or when you're like oh, waiting yeah. for something? Do you just like jam away in your kitchen? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yes. If I get the music going, I will be in the kitchen all day, uh, all kinds of music. <laughs> My kids will laugh at me because I hear you in there. <laughs> they'll be in the bedrooms and I'm out there singing God knows what, because yeah. I like, everything. I like, I like old country. I like some new country, not a whole lot. Um, I love classic rock. That's probably my favorite is classic. Yeah. Rock. Yeah. Um, just Hi, yeah. hanging with Mr. J. Sorry. I want to give a shout out. Hey there. I am so glad. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. Oh, no. I just, I, yeah, music, definitely. That keeps me motivated in the kitchen. And I'll, I'll sing loud and I'll sing proud. <laughs> Amen, girl. I think that's the one thing that I need to do more of that would really kind of make it better. Because I, too, love music. But my problem is, is like, as soon as I'll put on my music, my kids are like, Mommy, no. I want to listen to, like, Teenage Me and Ninja Turtles. Oh, God, no. no. Or I want to listen to <laughs> like all eight unicorns or like oh, no. all their, I mean, I have a three and five year old and they're just like, oh, no, mommy, your music's not real music. They want to listen to like the cartoon theme song or the like, let's listen to Batman. And I'm like, oh, my oh, God. Oh, baby shark. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yes. God. It's yeah, I'm that, kind of glad so. we're over all that phase. Uh, Kate, I, are I you sure? Are you are you over that, Kate? <laughs> Have you moved that. on? Have you she's moved on from Baby the, Shark? <laughs> she's got oh, quite yeah. the variety on her playlist. She's a uh, he likes everything too. I like your music. Yeah, she she likes my music. My son, mm, he judges it a little. Some of it, some of yeah. it, not all of it. He's fifteen, so that'll probably pass. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And I will like listen to books, but I rather have music. You know, I, I go through spurts. So I used to be a music therapist and I, I say used to be, I mean, I, I still am. I mean, that's what my education and professional background is in is music therapy. And so music, I am a musician. My husband, that's what he is a college professor of oh is music. God. And so music is near and dear to our, our lives and yeah. in our hearts. We've been performers. I mean, that's what brought us together. Um, and so, I mean, I listen to music all the time, but what about 
I don't know, 10 years or more ago, I really started getting into audiobooks mm -hmm. and I started discovering a new love for audiobooks. And so now it's like a battle of the ears. What do I want to listen to? Music? Or my favorite audiobook. <laughs> you know, music, like what kind of music do you like? Um, you know, it really depends on my mood and what I, I if I am cleaning, mm -hmm. I definitely am I'm like it's either gonna be some like girl power country <laughs> or you know, <laughs> something like that, or um or like the old school like nineties rock yeah kind of music yeah. um I like some, some of that. salt and pepper you know like i don't know yeah. something like something like that um yeah. throwbacks but you know if i'm chill if i'm laid back if i you know and just needing to wind down decompress from being around my kids all day every day <laughs> you know i'm i'm listening to i don't know just something of course I'm blanking on, on names, but usually just more like, uh, kind of singer songwriter vibes, mm -hmm. um, kind of just very basic guitars and, and one vocalist, very kind of chilled down yeah. music. So I'm a little all over the place. I really love everything. The only music that I just cannot find much appreciation for, unfortunately, is like the screamo stuff. I respect it, but I just don't have in yeah. it, have it in me to listen to yeah. someone scream. I just no, I, that's I like the only either. thing I do. I'm like my kids do it enough. I I need I can't hear it. <laughs> Yeah, some of it I'm like, what are they saying? Am I old? Am I have I gotten old because now I sound like my parents? What are they saying? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, just like what what music are these kids playing these days? I'm just, yeah, I'm just like feel like I'm like my parents and grandparents all of a sudden. Yeah. I don't know. I like, reached um, that I've reached that point in parenthood. <laughs> so do you like uh like Jack Johnson or um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I thought of when you said, you know, nice singer songwriter. Mellow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, love, I, I like Adele from time to time. And, you know, I'm just really all over the place. I'll go from Adele to M Miranda Lambert or, you know, did, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I really am eclectic. I love old school rock. Uh, mm -hmm. The other day, you know, the kids, my husband and I, I mean, we were like just kicking it to um, Jitterbug. I mean, like oh, yeah. we were like doing the, the, like the yeah. throwbacks. Like, I mean, we were going way back and it was just, I mean, we love oh to, gosh. it's so funny. I mean, we will just like come up with whatever, like funky, crazy song that just pops in our head. Like <laughs> the other day I was like, I was like, oh Matt, play ice, ice baby. I haven't heard, you know, <laughs> that in, in like a minute. Let's listen to that one. You know, it's so, it's so funny from time to time, like what ends up popping in our head that we haven't heard in like a decade or two. Yeah, we've been putting together a playlist for our road trip because we're getting ready to go to the beach for a few days. So we got about a six hour drive and uh, oh, wow. we have to have music. And my mom's mm -hmm. going with us. So we're trying to make mm -hmm. it music that she would like to. So we're trying to leave out too much of the hard stuff I'm that, childhood. you know, we, yeah, we do like the hard stuff too, but. Hi, Ray. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we, uh, it was like everything it's, it's just everything from old george jones to um yeah tom, tom petty and uh yeah. gosh everything in between like you know i i i love that and i think that that's really what can bring life into these types of activities like cooking that do require process and do re require waiting and time and you know that kind of thing i think that's really the only thing that's going to in some situations probably get me through because i'll just move on <laughs> to the next task and <laughs> and lose patience with it um but music is the thing something. that helps me we have to come up with something for her to, yeah that she can enjoy cooking <laughs> So Jerry, here's a question for you. So with some of your like more gourmet meals, the things that have like, cause usually when I'm looking for meals to make for my husband and I'm like, one of the key words and searches that I use is like five ingredients or less. 
Like mm-hmm. I'm looking for the, the, the easiest, like the, the less complicated, the better, because a lot of the times when it comes to ingredients, number one, I don't cook enough that if I'm buying, you know, one ingredient, it goes bad before I can use it all. So I feel like I'm wasting money. Yeah. Uh, and number two, I, I just, I get intimidated because it's ingredients that I'm not familiar enough with that. Okay. If the, my local store doesn't have this brand and amount and says this specific, you know, style of phrasing, like, well, wait, it says zesty Italian seasoning, <laughs> but in this, it, but in my local store, it just says seasoning Italian. <laughs> wait a minute you know so it's like i get thrown off so where are you in that experience um you know with ingredients how do you get exactly the ingredient you need well i think because i've been doing it for so long i Uh, now i know not to let it look out and or improvise if i can't find something or I'll change it. I'll change recipes all the time to make, you got to change it to make it what you like, what, what's your own recipe. Um, but my husband is really good at swapping out seasonings and making things taste a certain way. I mm. not as good as he is. <laughs> yeah. But um, like right now I'm sitting here thinking, what is the difference between zesty Italian seasoning and regular Italian seasoning? What makes it zesty? I don't know. That's my I'm question. I'm, l- I'm like literally <laughs> agonized over that for a full day one time. This is going to look it up right now. <laughs> I'm just like, is it just like a brand? Is it a marketing thing? I don't know. But it I feel be. like, I feel like just visually when people, you know, my husband's like, okay, what does the recipe call for? And, and it's like just a general broad thing and he's like well there's like five different types which of these do you want me to get and I'm like I don't know I don't know what I'm doing I have no idea what to get all five I don't know you know um (laughs) so um so yeah I mean I feel like that's kind of where I'm at when it comes to recipes sometimes the ingredients that people say oh just buy this or it's it's a half of an onion well then what do i do with the other half um you know oh, like that kind of stuff you wrap it up you wrap it I up need. in foil and it'll last a while in your refrigerator <laughs> true i guess until we make the recipe again right yeah it'll, so it'll, can it'll, you can you freeze your vegetables like that so say you use half of an onion or half of a green pepper uh that kind of thing or you know, garlic yeah, clothes or something. Can you freeze those yeah. things? Yeah. You can like chop okay. up your, chop up your onion and freeze it. Chop mm-hmm. or you chop up your bell pepper and freeze it. Uh, we invested in a food saver because some of the stuff I would freeze in freezer bags and didn't use it within two months, three months, it would get freezer yeah. burned anyway. So we got oh, a yeah. food saver and um, it's helped out a lot and you can. Food saver. So what is, describe like that to me. What sealer. is it? It's what? A vacuum sealer. So it. Oh, yes. I've out. seen those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's helped out a lot, especially with meat, but you could probably oh, yeah. use it for uh, onions and bell peppers and yeah, you can. Do you them. braille label yours then to, to know no. what, what you've got in your freezer? No, that would make too much sense. <laughs> you funny, Jerry. <laughs> it takes the see i'm not patient enough for that <laughs> work out i hear you yeah i mean like because i i mean i like that's another thing i like to stay organized and i like to stay clean and so i feel like if i have too much in my freezer like i'm just it's i'm not going to remember what's in there it's all going to look the same i would yeah. i would feel like i'd have to somehow no. have a system yeah if i lived alone or you know, then I would have to label things more than I do for sure. Okay. Um, and what I do, if my husband's at work and my kids have to go to school, pre, you know, pre COVID when they actually left the house, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I just try to remember to ask them before they leave. And with the vacuum sealer, 
they can look at it and tell if it's chicken or pork. Now in the freezer bags, they couldn't really tell. They'd be like, I don't know if that's chicken or pork. So I would just thaw it out and whatever it was is what I made for dinner. <laughs> so the, w when you vacuum seal it, the, the food savers, it, it, it's clear, like it's not foggy or anything. No. Like you can mm -hmm. see, you can, you can see it. Tell her, what, tell her what it looks like to you. Well, when you vacuum seal it, the bag is, is clear, but after it's in the freezer for a while, it's a bit foggy because it's cold, but after, okay. yeah, you can still see what it is. You can still recognize. And you can feel the shape better. Yeah. Like you could feel oh, yeah. if it's a bone in pork chop, you could feel that. Um, okay. Yeah, what were you saying? You're like, no, that's a pork chop. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'm like pork chop, no chicken, no pork chop, no chicken. Well, whatever it is, we're going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. I should label them. I really should. So, um, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite brand of seasoning? Like usually I feel like McCormick is like the one I can count on. No, the most I, I really but, don't i'll buy store brand stuff um okay well well like taco seasoning if i don't make my own uh i'll buy um ortega or yeah usually ortega but although we just found taco bell the other day taco yeah. bell seasoning um but i like to make my own as far as that goes but for like chili i have made my own chili seasoning but i prefer to buy um is it McCormick chili seasoning? Um, McCormick. Or the store brand. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Cheaper. Sometimes it's a dollar cheaper to buy the store yeah. brand. The same ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I really don't have favorites. It's I'll pay a dollar for, you know, a jar of garlic at Big Lots. So. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Does, do you feel like it, does, it doesn't really change the taste of your recipes or anything? No. No, not been. really. Okay. What if Good I to know? There's something that like I won't buy store brand uh, mayonnaise. I'm kind of like a oh. mayonnaise. <laughs> I'm kind of about, I'm kind of like that with ketchup. I don't know what it is about ketchup, but I'm like a Heinz girl all the way. Like <laughs> the off brands, just be, they're not the same. No mayonnaise. I have to have the good mayonnaise. Um, yeah. I need to think yeah. if there's anything else that I don't like to use. Are there any textures? Like, you know how some people have food, like issues with food because of textures? Like, mm -hmm. like, add yeah, my daughter. <laughs> what, what is yours? What's the one you don't like, Caitlin? Uh, I'm not sure. You have texture problems. Too. I do have a texture problem. It's gotten worse as I've gotten older. Hey, they same. Have same, 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 same. Um, like when you go to the deli and you buy lunch meat, uh, yeah. it, it cannot be slick or slimy in the least bit. Oh, it, it yeah. has to feel like it just came. No, it can't be slimy. <laughs> I will not. Uh, they yeah, tried that would gross me, me out. Yeah, they tried to give me a sample the other day. They were selling some sort of turkey. Now, this should have been my first clue. They were selling it for $1.99 a pound. Oh. And usually here it runs anywhere from $7 a pound to $8.99 a pound. So I thought maybe mm -hmm. we just stumbled onto a good deal that day. And uh, they said, would you like to sample it? I said, sure. I didn't even taste it because it was, they, my husband handed it to me in the little paper, you know, and I, I went, nope, not going in my mouth. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Yeah. No way. I'm not eating that. Um, fried okra. Forget See? it. I will not eat fried okra ever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think I've had that in long, long enough to remember. I have, nope. I used to have issues with uh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not so much now. I guess it depends on how they're prepared. Um, yeah. But um, mush, um, marshmallows sometimes just tickle my mouth. Like I just want to laugh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Marshmallows, like I, I like the taste, but for some reason the texture is just like, I don't know, just confundles my mouth. I don't know. I don't like gummy candy. Any kind of oh, gummy. Oh, I don't like it. You wound me. <laughs> I me love gummy candy. <laughs> my husband, they're like, 
gummy everything and gummy worms, forget it to get those things away from me. <laughs> oh girl. I see. I'm not a chocolate person. I'm a gummy and the sour, oh, the better. Like yeah. She's just like me. Hey, you're my girl. <laughs> Bring on the chocolate. No. <laughs> yeah. My husband's like that. He's like, and the, and the more like hundred percent cocoa, like the more chocolate, the better. And I'm like, I yeah. don't like, I, I just, I don't like dark chocolate. If it's going to be chocolate, it's got to be milk chocolate. I love <laughs> some Snickers. Don't get me wrong, but gummy candy, my kids and I, we will go to town on some gummy bears. Gummy peach rings are pretty good. Oh yeah. I like peach mm. rings. Yeah, yeah. Those are good. Sour peach rings. Yeah. These kids are, my kids are like sour, everything sour. Yeah. Yes. I'm the same way. <laughs> All right. Well, I have not checked into the chat in a very, very long time. I, I apologize if people have been asking questions. I feel like ever since I got kicked off, I've kind of just been. Ray says uh, I can't swallow okra at all. I don't care how you fix oh, it. Ray says he cannot swallow okra at all, no matter how, you, no matter how you fix it. Oh yeah, well, see, I'm right there with you, Ray. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Fried zucchini either. Can't do it. Oh, you, really? I you know, do one, me, but not one thing that I have enjoyed that I absolutely love are plantains. Yes. I have discovered a new love of plantains. I mm -hmm. love, 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 love plantains. Yeah, they're good. All right. Well, girls, I am going to bring it to an end. It has been a wonderful, wonderful evening chat about parenting and cooking at all of i've been thoroughly enjoying this i hope everyone in the chat has as well if anyone wants to post any final questions get them in now before we wrap things up and jerry i want to just thank you so much for coming on my channel this evening it has been an absolute blast i will have to do this again and actually like get into some real good like cooking tips and recipes and cook together I, i'm excited oh, yeah. you've got me fired up girl i'd like to do that That'd yeah be especially yeah. kind of i mean i know you have some experience with cooking but kind of you know helping someone learn how to do it that sounds like fun yeah yeah i think um like coming at it from just you know, the bare minimum basics, it would be a good starter. I think a lot of people out there, especially if they're transitioning from high school to college, getting out on their own for the first time. And, you know, they've had these meals prepared for them, for them their entire lives. And mm -hmm. that was sort of the situation I was in. You know, my mom was a great cook. She didn't want me in the kitchen. So I never learned. <laughs> I had to learn on my own. Um, hence why I'm in the position, I guess, that I'm in today. But <laughs> <laughs> I just, um, I really appreciate everyone joining me in the chat this evening. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful for you guys hanging out with me this evening. Jerry, I'll let you close with any final thoughts words anything you want to share with anybody and make sure you all check out the description box go check her channel out subscribe explore her wonderful deliciousness that she has uh, on her channel ah uh, just thanks for watching tonight and it, it was a lot of fun it's been a while since i've done a live stream i life has just thrown some wrenches our way this year as it has a lot of people so i'm not as consistent mm. right now as i'd like to be I took a break mm -hmm. for a while and it's kind of hard to get back into the swing of it, but I do miss it. So, I mean, I hope you guys check us out and I don't know, just any suggestions on what you want us to cook, just throw them in the comment section and we'll see what I can do. <laughs> <Yay. Within reason. laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to throw some stuff at you. <laughs> oh I want, I I know. Have you done a video on banana bread? You did. I think you did. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember seeing it, thinking. Yeah, it I remember it apart. didn't. It didn't quite come out. Yeah, the way you thought or something. I don't know. But I'm wanting to to do that. Um, that's actually gonna. That's on one of my lists. So I'm gonna go check that out myself. So, all right, <laughs> you guys. Thank you all so much for joining. I will catch you all in the next blind community chat. Make sure you've hit the subscribe, the like, and. Hit the notification bell so you can catch the next one. All right, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.